Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 we are working in module 5 again and we are working on lesson number 13 and that means that we are multiplying mixed number factors and we are relating that to the distributive property and the area model. So let's take a look at some of our homework for tonight's, uh, for tonight's lesson 13. Problem number one asks us the following. It says, find the area of the following rectangles. Draw an area model if it helps you. And the one I'm going to do is problem 1b. Uh, the number is a little bit unusual, right? It's 32 fifths feet times 3 and 3 eighths feet. And one thing that I'm noticing right away is that if I do my area model and I leave this as a fractional part, 32 fifths, I'm going to be multiplying a very big number, 32, times these other parts. And I don't really have to, because I'm noticing on this side, there's a mixed number, and on this side, it's an improper fraction. So I want you to pause for a second and think about how we can solve that problem. We've got a mixed number here, and we've got an improper fraction here. Pause for a second and see what you think. Okay. My solution to that problem is that I'm going to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. Let's see. Um, how many fifths make up a whole? Oh, five fifths would make up a whole. So let's see, how many holes do we have when well, we have 32 fifths? Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. We have six holes. I think this is the same as, let me write that down. I think that's six, six and two fifths feet times three and three eighths feet. That's a better representation, right? Six and two-fifths. And those mixed numbers look like they're more manageable. In fact, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just to keep my thinking straight, I'm going to go ahead and do an area model. Let's see. Six and two-fifths. I think that means this is six and this is two-fifths. And then on this side, let's see. We've got three holes from this, right? Three holes and three-eighths more. So three and three-eighths. Now we should be able to go ahead and do our area model multiplication. I always start with the easiest ones first. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but 3 holes times 6 holes is 18 holes, so that's 18 here. Next up, we've got 3 holes times 2 fifths, so that would be 3 times 2 is 6, 6 fifths, 6 fifths. Over on this one, we've got 6 holes on this side times 3 eighths, so that would be 6 times 3, or 18 18 eighths is what we're in, the unit we're in. Let's see, and then this finally this one is 2 fifths times 3 eighths. 2 fifths times 3 eighths is going to be, let's see, 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 8 is 40. And you know, right away I'm noticing on this last one, 60 fortieth, 6 fortieths right here. I'm noticing that I could divide the numerator and the denominator both by 2, and that would be, let's see, 3 twentieths. Let's make it a little bit easier for ourselves. So now, it looks like we've got to add all these pieces together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here on the left-hand side. We've got 18 plus 6 fifths. Oh, that's 1 and 1 fifth. Plus 18 eighths. Oh, let's see, 16 eighths would be 2 holes plus 2 more eighths. Oh, again, 2 eighths. I don't have to write 2 eighths. I could just write 1 fourth. And then plus 3 twentieths. Okay. So let's see if we've got that right. 18 holes is here. 6 fifths is here, expressed as 1 and 1 fifth. 18 eighths is here. We pulled out 16 of our eighths to make two holes, and then we had two more eighths left over, and 2 eighths is 1 fourth. And then finally, we had our 3 twentieths over here. So now I'm noticing a couple of things, which is I want to combine all my like units. Unfortunately, all my fractional units are different, fifths, fourths, twentieths. But I do have two holes here, and I do have one hole here, and I have 18 holes here. So let's see, 18 plus 1 plus 2, that would be 21. So it's 21 holes plus 1 fifth plus 1 fourth plus 3 twentieths. Wow, is my handwriting there bad or what? Woof! Let's try that again. 3 twentieths. Three cheers for legibility. Awesome. Okay, now I have unlike units. And I need like units for my fractions here. Let's see. Now my question is, let's see, could I make fifths into twentieths? I could, right? If I multiplied one-fifth times four over four, I could make fifths into twentieths, and I could combine them with these. Awesome. Well, can I make my fourths into twentieths? Yes, I could. I could multiply my fourths times five over five, and that would give me twentieths as well. So you know what? Let me do this on another step. So I've got 21 holes over here, plus, and I'm going to say 
oops, I'm going to get parentheses. So I'm going to say this is 1 times 4 over 5 times 4 plus, that's going to give me 20th right here. Awesome. Now, for my force, I needed to multiply by 5 over 5. So let's see, 1 times 5 over 4 times 5. And then my last one is already in place. I don't even need a parentheses for it, right? I just need to say that's 3 20ths. Awesome. Let's see if that works out. So, again, 21 holes. Don't want to lose the track of those. Plus, let's see, 1 times 4 would be 4 20ths. Plus, let's see, 1, oops, sorry, 1 times 5 would be 5 20ths. Plus, 3 20ths. Whew. Almost there, almost there. So I still have my 21 holes, and now I can add together all of my fractions because they're all in the same units. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 2 more is 12, and so that's 21 and 12 twentieths. And I would be done, except for the fact that I'm noticing that both of these numbers can be divided by 4. So let's divide by 4 in the numerator and divide by 4 in the denominator. And we would get 21, and let's see, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. And that is our answer, that multiplying 6 and 2 fifths feet by 3 and 3 eighths feet is going to yield 21 and 3 fifths feet squared. Beautiful. Let's take a look at another problem. Problem number two reads as follows, and this time we're going to need to use our read, draw, and write strategy. Problem two reads, Chris is making a tabletop from some leftover tiles. Oh, this is something I've done. He has nine tiles that measure three and one-eighth inches long and two and three-fourths inches wide. What is the greatest area that he can cover with these tiles? Huh. So I want you to go ahead and pause for a second and think about how you would model this problem. We've done the reading part. Let's think about the drawing part. So I'll give you a second, a second to pause and think about that. All right. Let's think about our drawing. Red, and we've drawn. I think we should just draw one tile, right? I'm thinking one tile will do it. And then we just need to remember that we have nine tiles. So when we get done with all this work with the one tile, we don't forget and then lose our way. So let's take a look. Our one tile measures what? three and one-eighth inches long. Awesome. So let's see. I'm going to use our area model again to say that this is three and this would be one-eighth. Oops. One-eighth inches long. There. That side is now three and one-eighth inches long. And the other one is, let's see, two and three-fourths. So let's see. Two and three-fourths inches long. And now we've got a beautifully laid out area model. We just need to start doing our math. Let's see. Let's start again with the easiest stuff first. So three times two would be, three times two is six. Let's see. Two times one-eighth would be two-eighths, but two-eighths is the same as one-fourth, right? Let's see, next one, three-fourths times three. Well, three times three would be nine, nine-fourths, nine-fourths. Awesome, and then our last one, three-fourths times one-eighth. Let's see, three times one is three. And our denominator is 4 times 8, or 32. Yikes. 4 times 32. Okay, so now we just need to add up our fractional parts. So again, here, I'm going to do this here on the right. We've got 6 wholes plus 1 fourth plus 9 fourths plus 3 30 seconds. Ugh, brutal. Okay, well, I'm noticing something right away, which is I've got a lot of fourths here. I think I can combine all those. Those are like units. So let's do that. 6 plus, looks like 1 plus 9 would be 10 fourths plus 3 30 seconds. It's getting a little better. You know, now I'm noticing something else, which is that this improper fraction, this has two holes plus, it looks like two more fourths or one half. You know what? I'm going to pull those out. So I'm going to say this is like 6 plus 2 and 2 fourths plus 3 30 seconds. And let's see, I can combine my like units here, right? It's the six holes plus the two holes, so that's the eight plus two fourths plus three thirty seconds. And now I gotta figure out my way to get these fractional units together, because I cannot combine them until I have the same denominators, same units. 
when I'm noticing something, if I multiply this fraction times 8 over 8, I would not change the value of the fraction, but I would change it to an equivalent fraction. I would change it into something that was in 30 seconds, and then I'd be able to combine it here. So let's do that. Let's say this is 8 plus 2 times 8 over 4 times 8 equal, I'm sorry, plus the 3 30 seconds. And now I can do that math, 8 plus 16 30 seconds plus 3 30 seconds equals and now we can finally combine these two fractions. 16 plus 3 would be 19. So this is 8 and 19 30 seconds. But we're not done, right? That was one tile. We just figured out the area of one tile. 8 and 19 30 seconds inches squared. That only figures it out for one title. We've got to figure it out for nine. Oops. Had the wrong thing there. We have to figure it out for nine of those titles. Nine titles. So we're going to need tiles. So we're going to need to multiply this result, 8 and 19 30 seconds. We're going to need to multiply that by 9. So I trust that if we've gotten this far, we've solved this part together, I trust that you can do the last part, which is multiplying this part times 9 together. But I want you to remember something. When we make 9 copies of these tiles, we need to multiply that 9 times not just the whole part, but also the fractional part, because we are multiplying 9 times everything here, the whole number and the fractional part. So that's a test of our distributive property in mathematics, and I know you'll pass it and then write a fantastic sentence. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.